I think the most exciting thing for me about moving to an animated medium was firstly to be able to see the lost thing move because when I was doing the book I had very particular ideas about how this creature would move, the way its tentacles would sort of move in a, in a quite joyful or sad way, um, the way the doors on its body might rattle a little bit and um, particularly the way its eyes which are very small and nondescript and hard to show in a static picture but in a moving image I always imagine that they you could really show its curiosity by having these two little things moving around. The, the challenge of bringing the lost thing to, uh, to life through animation was, uh, first of all, it is a, a peculiar character that none of us have particularly seen before, a, a crazy hermit crab teapot tentacled thing that uh, somehow we had to make endearing and, and, and lovable and not scary. One of the interesting things about the lost thing, the character, is how much its form seems to be self-explanatory in terms of movement and personality. Something about the contrast between this big bulky metal carapace, these dainty little tentacles that it walks on, almost like on tiptoe, and these gigantic claws, um, which at first glance might look quite aggressive and a little bit scary, um, but on closer inspection, they can do little more than ring tiny dainty bells on the end um, and they're always kind of retracted almost like it's it's trying to hide behind its own body. We had a few discussions um, about about the kind of sound world and the kind of instruments that we might be using. And Sean was definitely um, wanting me to approach it from the point of view of the lost thing itself. It's like, what would be the music that this thing would listen to? What would be the types of instruments that would appeal uh, to this character? Uh, you know, sort of, so, so we're thinking like found objects, you know, um, junk percussion, all those kind of, you know, sort of instruments that you wouldn't normally put in a film or in a film score or in a classical piece or any kind of piece really. Uh, and how could we explore different textures and sounds and melodies with those things um, that, would, that would fit uh, in the context of this story? One of the key challenges of the Lost Thing character was the fact that um, it doesn't have a face and so I had to um, convey a lot of the uh, emotional uh, range or the expressive range of the character through body movement. So much of the film they're travelling, they're trying to find where the lost thing is from. So they're always walking or they're always moving. In the early tests we did focus on walk cycles with the lost thing and how, um, how it might move in a way that's somewhat convincing but alien at the same time. Interestingly um, some of the tests ended up looking a bit creepy. Um, which I didn't expect. It looks like a tarantula, um, and you don't want that because it has to be somewhat endearing even when you don't know anything about it. Um, and uh, we ended up developing quite a range of different um, attitudes that it had when walking. So quite a lot of its personality is actually conveyed through walking alone. Easily the hardest sound to create in the film was the sound of the lost thing itself. The reason for this is we, Sean really wanted to create a creature that was gentle and friendly and approachable. And yet what we were presented with was a large, rusty, huge cauldron of a creature made up of many moving mechanical parts. In the early passes of that, Adrian Medhurst, the Foley artist, and I attacked the creature trying to match and mirror every single movement with a sound. And what we got in the end was a metal calamity of, it was like a, a percussion orchestra of metal banging. Well, the way that we found the balance in the end with this creature was to just pull it back. And in all matters creative, I'm a strong believer in less is more and using only what's absolutely necessary, the most important line to, to, to sell the illustration. Um, and in doing so, he, 
the creature itself didn't have a consistent sound. It had a sound for each moment. And so we would interrogate what is absolutely needed to be communicated in each of the individual shots. And then we look to code that sound to that moment to communicate what we wanted.